Good news, MG. Finally, the features are now ready for training my machine learning model, okay. and I registered it as Azure Machine Learning Dataset, so you can use the features to train your machine learning model as well. Okay, then let's train our models, and we deploy them separately mm -hmm. over multiple web services. Wait for a second. If you're going to deploy multiple machine learning models in Azure Machine Learning, you don't need to necessarily deploy them over multiple web services. Did you know that you can deploy even more than one machine learning model over just one web service? Let's go! Hello everyone, this is MG and welcome to this session which we are going to leverage the capabilities of Azure Machine Learning to deploy multiple machine learning models but just over one web service and then do the inferencing. Let's check it out. Here's my Azure Machine Learning workspace. As always, we start with opening the workspace. If you have never seen Azure Machine Learning resource on Azure, if that's the first time you're seeing Microsoft Azure Machine Learning Studio, please make sure you watch the introduction to Azure ML video, which is the first part of MLOps video series. I added to the top right side of this video. Check that out. You will have a better understanding of the capabilities of this platform and how you can navigate through these services here. And then you will have a better understanding of what we're going to do and how we use Azure ML for deploying multiple models over just one web service. So, I'll add uh, the link to the codes, but here, just for your information, I'll go through the code that I executed before recording the call to save the time and also have a walkthrough together. Here I have opened my notebook, that's my working directory under my name, and I have already created a compute instance called MG01, you can name it whatever you want, and here's the number of the cores and RAM that I have for this specific compute instance. So that's basically the compute which is going to execute my codes that I have here in my in this notebook. So the first thing, very similar like Jupyter Notebook, as soon as you have your code in a different cell, you can just execute them and immediately see the results interactively. So I checked here, for example, the Python SDK version of Azure ML that is needed to execute in these codes. And then, as always, if you have seen previous videos, now you know that how we need to connect our code to our Azure Machine Learning Workspace. So we import object workspace from Azure ML Python SDK. And then from config.json file, we are connecting to that workspace and we call it as WS. So whatever I'm gonna do in this notebook after this code, with my Azure Machine Learning Workspace, I just need to refer to this WS object. So now let's say I want to train multiple models, but they are doing actually the same, they're using the same features. Let's say you have pre processed your data, you have came up with some features, and right now you have the pre processed features that you want to train more than one model. For example, here uh, I executed this code that is using the Diabetes dataset coming with scikit-learn package, and I'm loading those as training and testing. And the first model is just rich. It can be any algorithm. These are just example. And then the second one, the Bayesian for the same model. So I have the first model, second model. I'm fitting those to my low diabetes dataset that is coming from scikit-learn. Then. With Joblib, I can dump them as a pickle file. So this is my first model pickle file that is already trained and my second model. I execute it and the models are now trained. So moving forward, as you know, or if you have watched previous videos, you know that there is a concept called registering trained models in Azure Machine Learning. What does that mean? 
you certainly need a solution for model registry hosting your models all these artifacts that you're creating you might be using azure ml for multiple projects multiple use cases and each of them they have their own models or even for the same model let's say for the same use case load diabetes for this one you might come up training so many different models and and you need to have them versionized checking out which one should go to staging which one should go to production so you need to certainly have traceability of the process and also have the lineage of where the models are and how they got trained so that's why with using this dk of azure machine learning there's a concept called model that also include a capability call dot register so what does it do it will ask me that where is the model file which we just executed and dump it here that's why when i refreshed i saw that well my pickle files are here this is the first model and second model so the path is my current directory this is the model that i have and when i register this model in azure ml it will ask me that okay what going to be the name that you want to register this model right so i gave this name you can give it anything this is coming with the tutorial and the same thing for the second model that's my file and I want to give this name when I register it so I will when I want to refer to this registered model that's the name I'm going to choose and use and where you want to register it inside my Azure machine and your workspace WS which we got connected with workspace.fromconfig oh there you go uh, so I execute it says registering done let's check it out before moving forward with the rest so i go to model section and you can see by me there are two models registered my first model and my second model which is great so coming back to my notebook now what's the next next thing so i have the model registered and now that's the time i can deploy them over a web service to make them like an api so i will have a url when i call that url using request in python or any other languages or any applications that you have you just need the url for these models you call the url with the json inputs or the features and the prediction loop retrieved back so that server will be listening 24 7 ready for any request to do the prediction for here for diabetes use case but in order to score or do the prediction you have to code how you load the model how you put the inputs to the model and how you do the prediction your web server want to know how you do the prediction right so that's the score.py that you need when you deploy the model in azure machine learning so this is basically the magical write file command here is making a score.py file out of it and i'm going to execute it it gave me the file here so let's see what does it do for the score.py and deploying models in azure ml you mainly need two functions the first one is init which is optional the second one is a must to have is called run so the init one that's the place you initialize the model you load your model and by the way here we have two models usually we used to have one but now it's two so you want to make them global so the second function also will access to those so in it just i basically load the models that hey this is the my first model and this is my second model get their path and when you have the path use job lib to load them and give it a name model one model two and now i can have model one dot predict model two dot predict to do the prediction in run function not in init so this is basically what run function do this is the raw data you you send to the web server using request within a json format and the json will load the input data that you are calling your web server with grab the data and ship it to both model one that you loaded and you made them global so you can read it here and even model two so now i have two results so when you want to retrieve the results back you can see that both result one and result two will be result will be the results and will be returned this is the way that i will score these models right perfect what else i need to have to deploy the model now i have the models that i need to deploy i have the score.py now i also need to create the environment that i need to deploy this model by environment i mean what kind of packages dependencies your web server you need to 
get installed to let this work. So for sure, for example, in the second layer, he had job lib to load in the model NumPy to do some uh, data processing or, or grabbing the data or reading the data. And then I give it a name to my environment. That's all. So when I want to do the inferencing or deploying a model, I need to specify some configurations. And saying that for the configuration, it will ask me what is how do you score the model? This is the code. And what is the environment data? This is the environment. We just specified it here and then I added some conda dependencies and pip packages. That's all. You're ready to deploy the model. So give it a name. This is a name for the deployed service. You can specify anything. And then I would say that from Azure ACI web service that is coming from Azure ML SDK, deploy the model within these configurations. My web server just want to have one CPU cores and one gigabyte of memory, which is more than enough for me. And then coming again from Azure ML SDK model dot deploy, which is a capability there, I can say that, hey, go to Azure ML, deploy the model that I am telling you. Which Azure ML workspace? This workspace that we got connected on the top, if you remember. And then give it a name. That's the name of the deployment. For both models, now you can see I have two models, not just one. And then here's an inferencing config that this one is here that will tell Azure ML, here's the score.py and here's the environment you need to deploy. And then the deployment config, which is the infrastructure needed for the web server that we define here and the overwrite if it exists. And we'll wait to make sure the deployment is done. It usually take a couple of minutes. I, mine was actually pretty fast. I executed and you can see the deployment is over and that was the time I wanted to test. So from X, which is actually coming from scikit-learn, if I go all the way up, that's here that I load diabetes data set. Let's say this is my test data set that I'm going to test the deployment model, right? Or this is the inferency data set. I have some sample data and I ship it to the service that I deploy to do the prediction coming from the web server. And as you can see, interestingly, I have two predictions. Prediction one coming from model one and prediction two coming from model two, but both of them are coming from the same web service. I don't need to deploy multiple models over multiple servers uh, and maintain them both of them, pay for both of them. So they were all shipped to one because they use the same features. And you can even pre-process them separately in your score.py if you want to have different features go to each model. But here, the same input goes to both models. And you can see that the results are almost close. For the first class, we have higher probability, let's say, and the rest, uh, the other one, a little bit lower. So that was all about the service that we deployed. And now with service.delete, I can just simply execute, which I did to delete the service because I just wanted to showcase you and I no longer need this web service deployed. So to wrap up, we just saw that how we were able to deploy these regression models and here are the regression values for two models that we specified. Uh, and that's it. Well done. Thank you so much for watching this video and until next time, 